All right, so I thought I would be done by now, but this one has required quite a bit of trial and error, and I've been working with this one on and off. So you know what, I'll be, take a step back here. Let's talk through some of the considerations here that I've had to tinker with, and then maybe I'll get back to messing with this. Welcome to Machines and More. So I've started the custom loop build here in the T1 V2. If you're interested in doing such a build, there's a lot to think about. So I'll break this up into a few segments and I'll give you my recommendations based on what I've seen and learned thus far. So decision number one is gonna be your pump. Sub 10 liters, usually you're gonna have to go with an external unit or a CPU pump block combo. And uh, in the T1, unless you're using a really, really short GPU block and you can overlap your pump res with that block, there's not a reasonable location to mount a standalone pump res. So those two options are gonna be your only options here. There's a provision for an external pump at the back. You can use a bulkhead fitting at the back of the case with an Iceman DDC or something like that. For this build, a company called Mod Ultra sent over a pump block for us to check out here. Big thanks to them. This one's called the Lobo, which is a low profile block that houses your typical DDC pump. Really cool, uh, good machining, great build quality. And we've got a heat sink for the pump itself too. With a thermal pad, it's all metal so it should be good for pump cooling. It is a pretty low unit, which gets us to the second consideration here, and that's just how much space you need to give your motherboard side of the sandwich. Initially, I started out the build with the absolute minimum, and it seemed like it would work until I actually popped in the 90 degree rotary fittings that I'm using here. Uh, these are the Glacier fittings that uh, Fantech sent by, big thanks to them and uh, these are really high quality. And uh, it seemed like it just pushed out on the side panel when I tried it. So I did have to give it another five millimeters. So what you're seeing here is the divider shifted in five millimeters from the absolute minimum. One additional thing I did here was shift the motherboard standoffs out again by roughly three millimeters. This pump block has a really thick back plate and with the riser cable and power cable passing through around the back, it was just a better idea to relax that fit a little bit. With all the space on the GPU side, I thought I could shift the riser cable on and put the GPU at the outside most position. And that way I could run the fittings on the inside in the middle of the case. Uh, but that didn't end up working after I shifted the motherboard divider back inwards. So I did all of that and uh, moved the riser cable back to the innermost position. And that gives a comfortable amount of room for your typical block, which has the fittings at the top of the block. I think for most users, that innermost position is gonna be the safest bet. And I, yeah, I know there's the possibility to run a second rat on the outside uh, of this panel. That's really gonna depend on the thickness of your GPU block. And this alpha cool one I have here is just too much anyway. I am a little wary if this can work with reasonable fan speeds uh, with just one radiator here, because uh, I've got a 6800 XT and a 12700K, so I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful here and we'll see if that works. So as for the rad, you're gonna have to decide to hear how you split the difference. There's about 47 millimeters to the bottom of this motherboard here, and a little bit more on the power supply side, but it's still really, really tight. So you could do a 27 millimeter rad plus slim fans, which gets that to roughly around 45 millimeters or something like this TX240, 21 millimeters thick plus 25 millimeter fans gets it to just the edge. And you can't really do any more than this on the motherboard side. Now in my testing, 25 millimeter fans plus a thin rad beats thicker rad and slim fans. This particular rad punches above its weight because it's a really thickness optimized radiator. And if you look at the core of thicker rads, there's often a lot of wasted space hiding in there. So I was wondering if I should cram a T30 on the power supply side. If you have custom cables, it might work. I'm just using the stock cables with this power supply here and the difference at the end of the day isn't worth losing hair over. So I'm just sticking with the good old NFA 12 by 25s. So once you've got that rad plus fan decision sorted out the next radiator decision you will have to contemplate is whether or not you do the rad on the inside or the outside of the fans and you can do either the issue in sub 10 liters is mainly the tubing run initially i set it up with the rad on the inside and there just was not enough room for the fittings to connect the cpu block to the radiator right here and i wanted to make that connection directly so i ended up with radiator on the outside and you can see i'm using this flexible uh, extender fitting to hook up these two 
directly. So at this point, you figure it out your rad, the spacing to give each side, and I figure out how to connect the motherboard side of the ensemble to the radiator. So the next step in the cubing equation is where to pass the run back to the motherboards from the motherboard side to the GPU side. And one thing I wanted to try was to pass the tubing through this uh, between the motherboard and the power supply. But the way the power cable runs, that just isn't gonna happen. And even though I'm working with 1016 ZMT tubing here, that's, uh, and it's pretty flexible, there's just not enough room here. So at least with my materials for this test build, the best way is to go through closer to the rad here. Uh, for that, you will have to work up a few bends or fitting ensembles. I'm gonna do a few 90s and T through the middle, uh, but it's very feasible here. Okay, so last consideration here was filling, bleeding, draining, you know, maintaining the loop. Eventually, this is gonna flip the other way around, right? Because the rattle is gonna be on top for the airflow, but it doesn't matter when you're filling the loop or doing maintenance, you can turn it any side you like. One of the big problems with using a CPU pump block combo uh, is filling it. And one, it's not in an optimal location to fill without a longer fill tube, but then bleeding out the air is really a headache too. So I wanted to avoid all of that. The simplest so solution is just to work up an, an ensemble at the top uh, on this side, on the GPU side, uh, that can easily be accessed. And then also with a location to bleed out displaced air really easily. So what I'm doing here is using this T-splitter with a stop fitting here, and I can just unthread this fit fitting when I do maintenance or, or fill it up, and then open up the top of this flow indicator, and I've got all I need to get this thing filled up without too much trouble. It does require a few more fittings, but I think this is really gonna be worth it long-term. Now with a single rad, I mentioned I'm a little wary how well it'll work. Uh, so I'm gonna do this one up with soft tubing first. And if it works out well, then I'm gonna do clear hard, 12 millimeter hard line for this one. Yeah, I hope that was a good intro into the liquid cooling content here for the T1. So far, it's been an exercise in patience and a lot of trial and error. But as far as the case goes, since you can basically build in it, around it and you know take out pieces like uh, this one uh, you know these ribs here to make things fit and to screw in the fittings is actually not too terrible so expect an update soon as i wrap this one up please give a like subscribe if you haven't already thanks for checking it out with me